Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor gives you sports betting tips. This is Major League Baseball for Saturday, April 6th. Um, not much to say other than just to kind of get into it. Of course, we got our stuff here at the beginning uh, that I got to roll through. But uh, otherwise, you know, we've got uh, games all through the day Saturday, which will be good. Hopefully you had a good Friday and, and enjoy those games throughout the day. Um, we're going to have a few games without picks today for various reasons, a couple of them because there are just no lines out yet. And I think there's two of them like that. One of them uh, being, of course, the game in Wrigley that's fairly common for this to only have uh, the money lane market out at this point in recording. And so we're kind of taking a little wait and see approach on that. Uh, and again, Dub Club, though, gets all the updates in the morning, uh, everything that you need information wise to make all the bets, everything that I can't say here, just because I don't have the information right now, get you that on dub club, a discord chat there where y'all can ask me questions. If you want all sorts of extra picks, like the first five stuff, projections, summaries, nice and neat for you picks. When you can't watch the show, maybe people can't watch the show today. Maybe you're sitting here going, I'd really love to watch, you know, a 40 minute or, or however long I'm going to talk here show about baseball, but you know, I got little ones ready to I'll, I'll have that tomorrow morning. Um, if you're with us on dub club, you get all this stuff sent right to your phone. Uh, and again, now we have a, uh, the play of the day has now shifted over, uh, to be on, uh, a dub club as well. There's a separate package. If you want that, of course, if you're with us on that QR code there or that first link in the show description, the all access, but you get that as well. Uh, I've had a little bit of fun with the AI writing of the plays of the day here, the last couple of days, feeding in information and just having it uh, put it into words for me. Uh, and then we'll have some more fun with it. We'll, we'll have it, you know, talk like a toddler one day, or I don't know, we'll, we'll have some fun with it. Um, but again, 10 day free trial to start you out there uh, on the all access package. If you are not with us already on dub club. Uh, and again, just some quick reminders about the way the world works right here. If you're looking for more in information on the model and the rules that govern this community, www.pickswiththeprofessor.com slash new. Reminder, we're projecting average games. We do not know what will happen in one game. We're going to look really smart and some games are going to look really dumb. And, and I mean, really, the answer is neither. Um, you know, we, uh, we always say anything can happen in one game. And when we say a team should win 55% of the time, that means we know we're going to lose it 9 out of 10. And and, and folks, I, I've tried to explain this before, but it, it's a difficult concept for some people. So just a reminder, you know, we hope it loses 9 out of 10. You say, why would you ever hope that the bet loses? We hope it loses 9 out of 10 because I want 55% to be accurate, which means I want 45% to be accurate. Because if 45% accurate is accurate, then I can take when the model says 45%, but we're getting you know, plus 200, I can say, you know what? That's a really smart bet because I'm going to win this nine out of 20 times. Well, in order to win that bet nine out of 20 times, I've got to lose the 55 percenters nine out of 20 times. So it's kind of a weird concept. I, I would love to get every pick right, but in the long run, we know that's impossible. And so we know we're going to have some losses. That's the way it goes. What makes the bet smart is about the price we succeed in baseball oftentimes because people don't understand probability. A lot of it's just math. Um, there are no locks in gambling. That of course goes back to anything can happen in one game. We'll talk about a couple of games on Friday, how things went awry. Uh, you know, obviously some things went really well. Some things didn't. That's just the way it's going to go every day that there's, you know, double digit games. Um, the long-term trajectory is up, but that doesn't mean you have to bet everything I'm recommending, whether you have this or you have the full set of picks in the club. Always, always take what you like and leave the rest. And everyone should make a bet. You're not comfortable in. And like the show, please. That helps us out. We like it when you like it. And with that said, we'll start off here. 1 p.m. A's and the Tigers. No official pick on this one for now. I'll tell you what I like. And I'll tell you why I like it with the price of the way it is and what I would pick if pressed right now and why I'm not going to do it. I'd be on the A's right now. Uh, Paul Blackburn is a guy, as you remember, Cousin Jared, and I loved backing this guy. Last year, he was their best pitcher. The model's a little bit more down on him this year than it was last year. But 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 folks, hear me out. That he, he's not as good as that first start. But that first start was fantastic. Seven shutout innings. The underlying metrics were, were good, not great. But he's a very solid pitcher for him. Uh, Kenta Maeda for the Tigers got lit up in his first start, and that's kind of what the underlying metrics show. I mean, this is a pretty much a coin toss starting pitcher wise. Neither one of these guys is great. Blackburn being the best pitcher on the A's doesn't mean he's good. It just means he's he's respectable. So so these offenses are pretty similar. These starting pitchers are pretty similar. 
The issue is the bullpens. And that's where I'm not making an official pick. If we picked it right now, we would have a B grade on the A's. And I don't think it's crazy to take a B grade on the A's to win this game. Now, another way to look at this, I believe I saw that the A's have covered the plus one and a half in four of their last five games. If you wanted to look at it that way, you could the run line price on the A's right now gets you to C grade. So it's not exactly sexy, but you get all these cutoffs and all these thresholds over here on Dub Club. So if you have that, you can pull it up. You can see what the number is. You can go to wherever you look to shop around or whatever books you're using and see what those prices are. Uh, not great value, but, but it's not a crazy way to look. The, the reason why the model doesn't love the plus one and a half, we like plus one and a half more so in a game with a lower projected total. This total projected at eight. Uh, it's not going to be as cold as it was on Friday. We're talking about mid-50s, and the wind will be blowing out at about 10 miles an hour. So it's not that we're thinking it's going to be necessarily a high-scoring game. It's just that the model's projecting 8.6. Uh, which is a little bit higher than the books. And so when the books make their adjustment based off of the total, which they do as part of their run line calculation, and I do it in sideline, the model is giving a little bit less of a bump or a little bit of, of an adjustment or whatever and saying, it, it, because there's maybe an extra 10th or two of a run than expected than the, than the books think, makes that run that plus one and a half a little bit less value. But we like the minus one and a half in games where we think there'll be a lot of runs. We like the plus one and a half one we think there won't be a lot of runs. Uh, that's just a general rule of thumb. Uh, but uh, of course, unfortunately, the models know. I mean, the market knows that as well. So it's not necessarily that that's simple. It's kind of just a way to think about it in your head. Uh, so all that to say, you, you can look run line. I don't, I don't love it right now. Be great on the money line. But you know what I'm waiting on this one is the first five market. And we may play this as a first five tomorrow. We'll see what the price is. I have to assume the books are going to make us pay a little bit of a tax. And by that, I mean the plus odds that we are getting right now with Oakland. The current price is plus 149, which just eats into a B grade. Um, I'm guessing we aren't going to, you know, on the first five be getting, you know, um, you know, plus 160 <laughs> or something like that, right? I'm, I'm assuming they're going to make us pay a little bit of a tax in saying that the A's have a higher likelihood of winning early than they do late. The relievers have done solid, um, but I'm, you know, overall they, they, they're very unproven and they don't project very well. So that's a little bit of a concern. So I'm looking A's just want to see the first five market tomorrow, see what the prices are before I make an official pick, see how the market adjusts, you know, overnight here, people get some money in, in the morning, they'll raise limits. And then typically after that's when I'll run the update. And after that, some of that shuffling, sometimes it creates favorable opportunities for us based off of off numbers numbers moving so we'll see what happens there in the morning leaning a's no official pick as of yet but as always with all these shopping around can be a huge difference maker for you getting an extra nickel or dime at every single bet that you can make can make the difference between being winning better and losing better if you haven't signed up at bet us today check them out links in the show description to get you a 125 percent bonus on your first ever three deposits Bet US, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. 2.10 p.m. Eastern, Guardians and the Twins. This will be Carlos Carrasco and Joe Ryan. A couple of different ways we can look at this one. Uh, Joe Ryan, underlying metrics in the first start, very very much a mixed bag. Not Again, as I kind of mentioned, you're not going to take too much from that, just kind of pointing it out. Um, uh, Carlos Carrasco, same sort of thing. Underlying metrics were a mixed bag. Massive difference in the starting pitchers. Uh, of course, uh, Joe Ryan's the much better pitcher. You can look... To back the Twins, they're favored. They should be favored. The question is, is the price good enough? I think the question comes down to these starting pitchers. What's going to happen in the first five? That doesn't mean a first five bet makes the most sense because if the market is pricing it accordingly, then you don't have an edge. And if you don't have an edge, that's not, you know, you're not going to long term profit because you, you're not going to be able to just figure out who's going to win these games because they're unpredictable. They all operate off of probabilities. And so you need to have a higher probability of winning them than the price that you're betting. So we always talk about shopping around. That's one way to help you um, in, in, the, in, in fighting that battle. I don't know 
how the starting pitcher battle is going to fare between these two guys, I tend to say it's all twins, right? And I think the other thing that helps me uh, in that statement is the fact that uh, Joe Ryan is a fly ball pitcher. It'll be low 50s with the wind blowing in at 15 to 20 miles an hour. That sounds great for a fly ball pitcher. That's part of the reason why UCB models adjusting the runs down 17% here um so that's where we're gonna go under eight and a half it's a b grade models projecting 7.6 it's only a b grade because under eight and a half is a problem it's just the other day it's, it's never good because you always feel like you're missing out on uh that possibility of nine that doesn't mean i'm laying odds to, to lay it or not i'm just playing the under eight and a half here at, at a b grade this game could easily land you know two to one three to one something like that um the twins can score some runs I don't think the Guardians will score very many runs. I don't think the Guardians team total under is going to be a great play necessarily because you're probably going to have to pay the tax for it. Um, you're probably going to get a really low number. But the reason I like the full game under, in general, we like those more than team totals because the team total, you are cutting out half of the game and that increases variance. That's why I default to full games over first fives. I really only want to play the first fives when I think there's a specific advantage and reason to uh, either based off the price, the edge, or the, the situation, what we know about the teams, the pitchers, et cetera. Um, in this situation, I like the full game because I don't want to cut out half the innings, uh, the full game rather than the team total under. And as much as Carlos Carrasco is not a great pitcher, this Twins offense, as we've seen, uh, can really sputter here without Royce Lewis still, of course, in the lineup. Uh, you never really know what you're going to get from them. They've also been a team that's like, randomly on these day games, they'll play a Saturday afternoon game and a Sunday afternoon game. And like on one of them, they're going to bench like all their key players at some point, uh, or maybe between the two games, right? They're going to give these guys a day off. You know, Correa's had some injuries in, in the past. A uh, Buxton's been a guy who, you know, they treat him with kid gloves, right? So it's like, they'll randomly just give guys days off. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to be Saturday or Sunday. Uh, so check the lineups, of course, if, if that's something that's out by the time you're betting this. Uh, that could be the other thing that helps us with the under because I don't really know exactly what I'm going to get from the Twins lineup here, whether it's today or tomorrow. I kind of expect at least one of them to be a dinged up lineup, uh, maybe maybe both a little bit. Um, so that could work in Carrasco's favor. The wind helps in Carrasco's favor. The fact that the Guardians have a bunch of good relievers helps because I don't think they're going to let him get hung out to dry. I know it's early in the season, but like they don't need him to throw six innings. So if he's kind of struggling, get him out after four or whatever, they've got plenty of arms. So I kind of think that it's unlikely that Carrasco, unless the Twins just jump on him in the first, right? Put up like a six spot, which again, anything can happen in one game. I don't think it's going to happen with this these conditions, but like sometimes the ball just falls, right? And it's just, as a hitter, it just looks like there's nothing but green grass out there, right? Um, so that could happen, of course. But I don't think the Twins are going to put up a ton of runs off Carrasco because of all the things I mentioned. I think they'll put up a few for sure. I think Joe Ryan will have a good day. I think it's low scoring. I think it's possible that the twins maybe don't even get that many. And at that point we're cruising to an under, even if the twins do some damage off Carrasco, it still sets up to be more like a seven to one type ball game. So there's a lot of ways we get to the window with this under again, nine would be better, but we're not going to get that under eight and a half B grade pick in Minnesota. 215 Marlins and the Cardinals. Um, pretty similar weather here. Mid fifties. Wind will be blowing a little bit in a little bit across um, no, no pick on this right now. Uh, I want to see what the first five market looks like. The suggested model pick right now would be under eight and a half at minus 120 for a B grade. A model's predicting 7.1 runs. Um, we saw this game play out on Thursday. Now, Lance Lynn looked fantastic for the first three innings, and then I think it was three, four, I don't know, and then just like collapsed. Uh, I'm moderately high on Steven Matz. He's a guy that I just remember when they, I was kind of like, Hey, I think this guy's like kind of decent and sure enough, he grades out as you can see on screen above average in 96 grade. Uh, Trevor Rogers is very okay. Probably not as good as that one year. They looked great. Probably wasn't as bad as he, as he looked last year, kind of in the middle. And that's where the model's putting him now. Um, it's obviously more pitcher friendly conditions, pitcher friendly ballpark. Although again, as I mentioned before, last year that park didn't play pitcher friendly at all. And, and there were no dimension changes. They didn't like rotate the park or anything that I don't know of. So I don't know what's going on um, with that park. It's one of the ones that changed kind of like the most. So it's something I'm keeping my eye on. Um, but there's a lot of reasons to like the under. Here's the biggest reason not to like the under. This Marlins bullpen like just has completely collapsed. I don't understand 
why it got so terrible all of a sudden. Uh, the model still like kind of ding them a little bit each day. I think it started out in the season, they were like a 90 and other than like a 103. Like, like every day they look terrible and they they get dinged like <laughs> two more points basically. I, I don't know where it's going to stop. Where's the bottom on this on this Marlins bullpen? Like goodness gracious, you know, or how much of it is just random variation? And that's, we've talked a lot about that early in the season, right? Is like, we don't want to overreact. We don't want to underreact. And how do we figure that balance out? And no one knows the answer. All we can do is look at the data and say, I'm adjusting it at the rate that on average makes sense. But in individual cases, maybe you look at it and you say, I want to adjust faster or not, right? So if you think the Marlins bullpen's fine, just play the full game under. No reason to deviate from that. It's only going to be a B grade because it's eight and a half. Or play eight. Uh, if it pushes at eight, who cares? Um, it's not like it's a college basketball Saturday or college football Saturday where your money is probably going to be like spread super, super thin. Um you know, and you, and you get better odds at, at, at that. So so if, if you're fine with the Marlins bullpen, under eight, I think it's the way to go. I, I at least want to see the first time market first. I want to see what it looks like. Uh, and so no pick for now for that reason. Because if the first five under is a reasonable price, I'd rather just do that. And look, if they're going to give up runs early and that park's all of a sudden going to turn into a hitter's haven, whatever, we'll lose early. If not, and we can get it under, I want to get my money and get out of Dodge before that Marlins bullpen gets involved. Because Trevor Rogers isn't, isn't you know, Sandy Alcantara. He's not going to go, you know, eight, eight shut on things probably, uh, unfortunately for them. So uh, watch him do that. No, that'd be incredible for did, but uh, I'm not very likely. So uh, I, I just don't like to be involved with the, with their bullpen if I, if I don't have to be. So that's how I'm looking at this under, but, but definitely want to check out the first five. Sides price really well right now, and you can see the the price on screen there. Uh, if you want to do the calculation yourself, you can, you can convert to what that is in the money line, uh, but it's pretty dang close right now. So not really worth investing on the side at, at, at this point, in my opinion, the Cardinals are, are home favorites and they should be, um, you know, I don't think there's a lot of value on it. Last thing I'll say on this though, is if you're really thinking the Card the Mullins bullpen is just like the bottom has fallen out and the model can't adjust quick enough. That's a reasonable take. If that's your take, uh, I bet the Cardinals if that's the case because the model, if that's the case, your thought, the, the model can't figure it out. And so the, 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 there should be a bigger edge on the Cardinals than the model realizes. But uh, for this point, we're kind of, I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know the answer. I'm not, I'm not a fortune dollar show. Uh, I'm going to say this model's bullpen is not good and the model's accounting for on average the best it can. And so right now the side is not worth investing in. Uh, but if you think the model's bullpen is terrible, then maybe that's the way you look. Um, but I'll be looking under once we do the first five. Mark on that one. Bunch of games at 4 p.m. We'll start off with the Dodgers and the Cubs. And man, the Dodgers, uh, you know, they scored some runs for us, but I did not see Bobby Miller struggling the way he did. And that's what we're talking about. One game, anything can happen. And sure enough, that's what happened to us in that game. And uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. In this one, no pick as of yet. The reason why is there is no total market out. There's no run line market out. I just want to see what's going on first before I lock myself into a pick because I like to, if possible, uh, only make one pick per game unless I really love them both. And so right now we'd have Cubs plus 165 at a B grade would be the pick. The A grade threshold's about a nickel higher. Um, Jordan Wicks and Yoshinobu Yamamoto, uh, who looked really good in his last start. Yamamoto, uh, also of note, while he struggled in that first start, when you put the two starts together now, the underlying metrics on him are pretty positive. Um, and we were kind of high on him coming over. We have enough data at this point from pitchers coming over from, from some of these other leagues that we, we kind of know about how where they fit in based off of how much they dominated. And it goes back to what we're always seeing about baseball, about any single sport. As I just watched Trevor Story, looks like he dislocated his shoulder. That does not look good. Um, we know how to project you as a player and as a team against the good teams based off how you do against the bad teams, right? So, so we have a pretty good idea here. And, and that first start was... Not good, he, you know, lack of adjustment, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But the end of the metrics weren't terrible. The last start was 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 much better. I'm not dying to back the Cubs here because I'm not dying to fade Yamamoto. Um, so it'd be a B grade pick right now on the Cubs, but it's it's not something I'm I'm pulling the trigger on. I just want to see everything else before before I do kind of sit on a little bit. Um, the Dodgers don't lose a lot of games. I 
want to address head on someone who's going to say the Dodgers can't lose twice in a row because they're that good, or, or hypothetically, let's say the Dodgers were to lose this game, I uh, would say the Dodgers, there's no way they lose three in a row, right? That, that's not the way the world works, unfortunately. These are, um, you know, for the most part, memory memory less distributions, uh, which is a fancy way of saying what happened yesterday doesn't really impact today. The players are however good they are, and what happened yesterday on the field doesn't really change that. They still kind of have the same skill level. Now, like if somebody got hurt the day before, that affects it. Yes. So don't. I'm not trying to get into semantics. I'm just saying like the fact that someone won or, or not doesn't. Now, now what does a little bit is, is bullpen usage. That's kind of the ask. Just the caveat to it because if you or to lose, you are less likely to use your better pitchers. But we've seen like a team like the A's, you know, they've thrown Mason Miller a lot and they've, they've only won the one game. The Marlins, I'm sure, have thrown their best relievers. They haven't won at all, right? So it's not that simple. <laughs> um, and if you are winning, you tend to be using more of your better relievers, and that might hurt you because then they are unavailable. But that's not always the case. You got to look at the box where see who pitched, right? Because you can win easily in runaway fashion, or you can win like comeback last minute fashion. You just never know who's being used and how the managers use those guys. So bullpen uses your side. The fact that the Dodgers lost yesterday has no bearing on if they win or lose today, uh, going forward here on, on Saturday. They're favored. They should be favored. Um, I'm going to say today what I usually say about the Dodgers, and it's unfortunate for us that we, you know, we backed them on Friday as favorites and, and, and they lost. But again, that's the way it goes. We expect some favorites to lose and we expect some underdogs to win. Um, it's all about the price, and we like the Dodgers at that price. We didn't like the Dodgers at minus 200. We liked the Dodgers. The price was a little bit short on them, uh, and they scored plenty of runs, and then Bobby Miller got blown up. Like, who was to see that coming, right? So on the side of what I'm going to say is the Dodgers here, um, they probably shouldn't be favored by as much as they are. As you saw in Friday's game, baseball's weird. Baseball's random. There's a randomness component where we trend everything towards who the heck really knows in baseball because it's random because these guys are so good. Right, I want to make sure you all catch that. And I don't, I don't want to ramble too much, but I want to make sure we're all on the same page and you're learning and you're understanding. I'm a professor, right? I want to help you learn and become a better a sports better and a smarter sports better, right? It's because these guys are so good. You know, I, I play baseball still a little bit here at my old age. You put me out there, they destroy me because it wouldn't be random anymore because those guys are so much better than I am, right? But the talent discrepancy here is so close. And that's and that's why we have the whole batting average on balls and play thing. Because the level of defense across Major League Baseball is really good. And the really bad teams and the really good teams aren't that far apart in terms of how good they are. They they might appear that way to our eye, but we only see that after a large sample size. You contrast that with like high school level baseball or college level baseball, or even you get to like single A baseball, and like the differences are huge. And so this whole your batting average on balls and play is going to be the same, uh, you know because of all those factors, you, you can control blah, blah, blah. Like, that doesn't really hold that we know of elsewhere. It holds in the majors because, like, all these defenses are really good. All these players are really good. So all that to say, baseball is random. We don't want to play favorites at a big price. I didn't think the price was too big Friday. Dodgers still lost. I think the price is too big here on the Dodgers. Doesn't mean the Dodgers won't win. It just means, I think, in the long run, this is a little bit of a scary prop. It's Cubs or pass, but for me, I'm not dying to play the Cubs is the bottom line, unless the price gets amazing. But again, let's check out the run line. Let's check out the total market. Let's check out the first five. All that information will be available in Dub Club, and I'll make an official decision, whether it's an official pass or I got to pick on Dub Club. Again, free 10-day trial to sign up so you can figure out what I'm going to do in the morning. If you're not with us yet, sign up link in the show description. 4 p.m., Phillies and the Nats, no pick on this one because there's no line out right now. We've not confirmed both starting pitchers. I don't even know which one we haven't confirmed at this point. I assume it's probably Jake Irwin for the Nats is the one we haven't confirmed. I'm assuming we've confirmed Suarez for the Phillies because the Phillies, you, you kind of know who you're pitching. But at this point, fan, I'm sure what the fan graph projects is, is, is Suarez uh, versus Jake Irvin. Uh, this is a pretty massive edge to the Phillies, as you can see there. Uh, on screen winning 63% of the time. It's, it's pretty solid for baseball for early season uh, baseball here, especially for the road team. The Phillies cruise to a victory uh, for us here on Friday night. And, you know, it may not be that easy again here on Saturday. It may be. Again, you never really know how it'll play out. But uh, if it is these two starting pitchers, it's a pretty big mismatch. And, uh, 
no reason, um, you know, not to kind of view it as Phillies or pass, in my opinion. And if the um, price is too high, then I think you say, you know, pass. <laughs> uh, it, it's not. It's not worth it. And that might be the world that we live in. Uh, we will see. Um, but for now, the sports books don't have a price on this, so I can't really assess if there's anything that I'd like to play, uh, unfortunately. So with that said, we'll move on to the next game here, 4.05 p.m. Eastern Orioles and the Pirates. We're going to take the Orioles at minus 128. A grade threshold is three cents away. So if you shop around, you can find a minus 125 that gets you to the A grade. The way I'm viewing the Orioles is... If the model says there's an edge, I'm kind of playing it because the Orioles have been disrespected here for quite a while. We've loved to back them. They've been good to us, and I don't really see why we should change that that theory. They're a good offense, good bullpen, even again without Batista. Decent enough starting pitcher here in Tyler Wells. The Pirates have gotten off to a really good start. A couple things of note. Their offensive grade, I believe, is really on the rise. If I remember correctly, their offensive grade in the early shows, and someone can go back and look and, and tell me, and maybe I'm crazy, but I feel like their gra offensive grades jumped. Uh, that it was in the 80s. Now it's up closer to 100. Uh, their bullpen rating has gotten great. The bullpen's been fantastic. Uh, down in the mid-70s, Mike Greenhouse is like the second-best bullpen. Again, I've got all the ratings out there at the Google Sheet, so someone can check me on that. I don't really know, but, you know, it's good. It doesn't matter. And, and it changes every day, so that's why I'm not like exactly sure, and I don't have it up in front of me. But it doesn't really matter. It's really good, really good bullpen, offense, respectable. Um, here's the issue: is that the Orioles are good, and this is a massive starting pitcher mismatch. Not that Tyler Wells is amazing, but I just don't have a lot of faith in Bailey Falter. Uh, I'm, you know, he's he's got some room to improve, and you never really know, of course, what will happen with that. But he got lit up in, a in his first start, and the underlying metrics were truly disastrous in that and he didn't project well coming into the season so you know like i said we're not gonna make too much out of one start and until we get three or four under our belt we really don't know a, a lot but i mean the first start was kind of like yeah it's kind of what you expect from it you know it's that's not good but if it for the for hit for the pirates is they've got a good bullpen a lot of good arms he gets rocked they bring somebody else in but against the orioles like the way they keep playing add on um the way they're just the way the orioles just Play great baseball, it seems like. Um, you fall down early, and it, it, it doesn't bode well. So I think the Royals are at minus 128. I'm a little bit surprised it's this low. Sideline says it should be around, you know, 150 or so, and I'm surprised it's not in that ballpark. Um, I, I wonder if this is a little bit of the Pirates have looked great to start the season and have. Um, we're going to fade them here. Hopefully we can still be friends, Pittsburgh. Don't don't go on a, like, 100-game losing streak of – Picking, doing whatever I don't do, right, um, because of this. It's not you. It's the Orioles that I think are a really good team. And, and uh, you know, kudos to the Pirates for what they've done. But uh, it, it just it's hard not to like the Orioles at a price like this when you're going up against a guy like Bailey Folter, which we just don't have a lot of faith in. 4.10 p.m. Eastern, Mets at the Reds. We're going to take the Mets here, plus 110. Folks, the Mets have won two in a row. And you know the old line for a major league, right? You know, one more, and that's a winning streak. So uh, let's back them again here at plus odds. This is a coin toss game. Uh, this is our favorite, the not necessarily the wrong team favorite, but the I have no idea what's going to happen. Give me plus 110. The reason we have no idea what's going to happen, trust the Mets bullpen more than the Reds bullpen. I trust the Mets offense more than the Reds offense. I can't believe I'm saying that. I really am only saying that because of all the injuries and the suspension, of course, that the Reds are dealing with. A fully healthy Reds offense, I would not be saying that about, but they're a little thin right now is the bottom line. And I just don't think this Reds team is that good. And I could be wrong, but folks, this is a hill that I'm going to die on here. Uh, they, they've started off here playing some weak teams, and they're only four and three at this point. Um, I don't think that's very good given the teams that they played. And it's a small sample size, so I'm not saying that we should overreact to that. I'm just saying that's kind of what I've been expecting here. So my take on the Reds, and look, like I like I told y'all, you know, take what you like and leave the rest. If you don't like this opinion, that's totally fine. But look, my opinion is the Reds are overvalued. I think they're overhyped. They remind me a lot, like I mentioned before, I think I mentioned this, remind me a lot of the, the, the 2016 Astros where the year before was like, man, these young guys look great. Um, 
made the playoffs that year and the Reds even make the playoffs. And then 2016 was a hard year. And then 2017 was when things came together. And that was kind of the year that all those guys were supposed to be in their prime. And I think the Reds are still a year away at this point. Um, I'm not saying they can't make the playoffs this year, even though they missed it last year. Uh, I'm just saying, I just don't think they're as good as people are treating them. I think the market's too high on them. I think the injury to Friedel, he was one of their best and most consistent hitters last year. I think the injury to McLean, I think the suspension of Marte, I think is like three big dings to their offense, losing Joey Votto. And not to say that, um, Avada was, you know, at his prime at this point. Um, but it was just more depth. And that's the thing is that, and, and, and obviously they've got a, a, a guy that can go first base now. So it's, let's obviously get a tough spot to tough way to find at bats. So it's not, I'm not trying to make that point. I'm just saying it was depth last year. And that was kind of what made them a little bit dangerous is that you, you had a guy like Elliot Cruz, who I know he ended up towards the top of the lineup later on in the season. I think he saw that he shouldn't be there because especially as a, uh, whatever it is, right hand hitter, he's like insanely clueless. Um, but as a left hand hitter, like he saw, but like you put him at seven hole, and it's like, man, that's a really good lineup. But when you put him and he's like your main guy, like he's not that good yet. Maybe he will be. And I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to say, like, he, he's gotten too much hype, in my opinion. I just think this Red Sea's got too much hype at that. I, I think they're going to be good. I think they're going to struggle this year. And my prediction is, People are going to be down on them next year, and next year I'll be higher on them because I think next year people will be like, oh, well, they didn't put it together. I'm going to be like, yeah, but now the year that things are actually looking right for them. So I'm not I'm not a Reds hater if you're a Reds fan. I'm sorry. Uh, I just don't think they're as good as the market realizes. So if I have a chance to fade the Reds early in the season when it seems like the market hasn't adjusted, I'm going to do it. Backing the Mets is obviously terrifying. Uh, but again, they have now won two in a row, and this is all about the price with – two pitchers that the model says are even, but honestly, I trust Luis Severino so much more than I trust Nick Martinez. Uh, we'll see if that comes to fruition, but I'm going to back the Mets here. Not because I'm overly confident the Mets are going to win this game. I'm going to back the Mets here because I have no idea what's going to happen. And you're giving me plus 110 odds. I think that's worth the investment. So then I game 7 to 5 p.m. Eastern Blue Jays and the Yankees. Man, the Yankees and Dodgers, the two teams I talked about yesterday, right? Uh, you know, rarely him value. And then we back him and they do that to us. Uh, folks, I, you know, that's, that's the way it goes. Um, I think you saw on Friday many of the reasons why I don't love backing the Yankees and the Dodgers in general, which is they tend to be favorites. They tend to be overpriced. And they aren't going to win the number of games overall that the odds would probably imply. The odds would probably imply the Yankees are like 105 win team and they're really good, but I don't think they're that good. And the odds would probably imply the Dodgers are like 115 win team and I don't think they're that good either. So there's just that extra tax. Um, that said, that doesn't mean we shouldn't back them here. Uh, today, I, I don't. I don't know. Um, I'm not going to talk about the side. Instead, I'm going to talk about the under because one of the things I said yesterday about what I really liked about picking the Yankees was I had no faith in the Blue Jays scoring. I was not con convinced their offense is is any good at all. And folks, you saw that uh, here on Friday. They looked terrible again. They got one run all game until the ninth inning when things kind of blew up. The Yankees kind of seemed like they ran out of relievers, almost, which was a little bit of a surprise. Uh, there for me, but you know, they, they got a couple more there, but only three runs. I mean, so now you're talking about the Blue Jays have not five runs in the last four games. That's not good, right? Um, but then they're gonna be throwing Kevin Gaussman tomorrow, one of the best starting pitchers in baseball. And he, that first outing, there was a little bit of concern how deep would he go dealing with uh, shoulder fatigue? I, I think it was, I can't remember. Uh, he looked really good in his. Decent enough. Um, I like the under here. Under eight and a half. It's a B grade pick. Uh, it's a B grade pick for the same way you talked about. I just can't give under eight and a half an A grade because uh, to me, B grade totals are good. A grade totals are great. And great is not going under eight and a half or over nine and a half. That's just the way it is to, in my book. That's just my book. Uh, but projecting seven and a half runs, um, under makes a lot of sense in this one. I don't trust the Blue Jays to score. And I don't trust anybody to score off Kevin Gaussman. He's one of the best pitchers in baseball. It's really that simple. 
Uh, the Shakey's offense, of course, is good, but as you saw on Friday, can completely disappear if the pitching is good, and that's what we have here. Doesn't mean the Yankees can't, you know, put up runs because they have a good offense. It doesn't mean the Blue Jays can't just bust out of it because they've got some talent, but this Blue Jays, I think, is being a little bit overvalued. Uh, I don't think they're as good as, as people realize. I think they're thinking of the old Blue Jays, and this Blue Jays team just does not have the same depth uh, to their lineup. If you're a Blue Jays fan, you are nodding along right now. There's been a lot of talk about the disappointment and the fact that, you know, they went after Otani and then, you know, Justin Turner, I guess, is okay, but they didn't really do a lot. And, you know, they they, they probably needed to add another bat and they didn't. So uh, I think you're, you're seeing that here going under because I don't trust either one of these teams to score. I think this could be a low scoring game. And if one team scores, we still got a chance at a, at a, at a seven, nothing, seven, one type under uh, in this one. So Clark Schmidt, for the Yankees, not great, but I don't think the Blue Jays' offense is great anyway. So let's go under that one. Seven to five PM Eastern, Astros and the Rangers. Uh, Hunter Brown, uh, I, have, I was not able to watch the game. Uh, we'll be curious to watch the, uh, the the replay of that one and see what what went on with him. I uh, saw so I give up, I think a five spot. The second, you know, uh, was it just one that outing? Was he just missing his spots? Was it just? Sometimes the balls just fall. I don't really know, but he obviously looked terrible. The Astros uh, got clubbed. Uh, they'll look to bounce back here. Right now, there is no line uh, on this game, at least when I pulled uh, the numbers. Uh, at, at this point, again, I'm not exactly sure who is not confirmed starting pitcher-wise. It looks to be fairly squared away that it's J.P. France and Jonathan Gray. Um Two very decent pitchers that grayed out pretty similarly. Gray did not look good in his first start, but historically has pitched well enough to get a decent grade. France mixed results his first start, and, and that's what his rating kind of indicates. He's kind of always had mixed results. He's had some nights where he's looked great and some nights where he's not. It's, it's very uh, straightforward there. The Astros of the edge on offense – Rangers are small edge bullpen games in Arlington. Small edge for the Rangers uh, with with Gray on the hill. Model says they win 52% of the time. Uh, no pick on this one because there's no line. Uh, we will see. But it looks like a nice night. If they decide to open the roof in Arlington, they could do that potentially. Uh, but again, pick in the morning on Dub Club. In free 10-day trial, if you're not with us yet, sign up today. 17 p.m. Eastern, White Sox and the Royals. I did add Royals minus one last night here on Friday, and it pushes. And that's why we like the minus one. Obviously, Royals money line would have cash, but those are some steep odds, and so it's a big risk because sometimes the minus ones just lose, uh, and that's just the way it goes. But uh, at least if we just stayed away from, we stayed away from minus one and a half, and so uh, we we pushed the Royals here. So we're going to try the minus one again here tonight. It's implied odds of minus one thirty nine. Again, you can create a minus one market if you don't have one yourself by betting to win a certain amount on the money line and then risking that exact same amount on the run line. That creates a minus one market for you. And the implication, if you do that, is you're going to be getting about minus 140 backing the Royals minus one. At this point, I'm looking to fade the White Sox if I can. That's the bottom line. If the price isn't good, I'm not going to do it, right? I'm not going to play Royals minus 300 just because, right? But the model says the Royals win this two out of three times. And I just don't think this White Sox seems very good. Uh, I'm not really breaking news there, I know. <laughs> but there's just not a lot to like about on this Royals team's very okay. Their offense is okay. Bullpens. Mm -hmm. yeah. Michael Walker here for him. So he's very yeah, okay. Um, but I mean, okay at home should work against the White Sox who have really like three competent baseball players. It seems like on their entire roster, which is hard to believe. Chris Flexen grades out as one of the worst starting pitchers in our database. He's been towards the bottom uh, ever since we started uh, publishing our individual starting pitcher ratings. Uh, looked bad his first start. Underlying metrics were bad. That's the same story he had last year. I mean, one of the worst starting pitchers should still be around who the White Sox have because they're just trying to eat innings because they're just trying to fast forward time at this point and get draft picks. The relievers are terrible. Their offense is terrible. I mean, I don't know. The White Sox are going to win some games. I mean, they beat the Braves the other day. They're going to win some games. But I'm going to say about them, what I talked about with the A's in, in a show, I don't know, several days ago, a week ago, that when we back the White Sox, it needs to be at really good odds so that we say we're going to win some, we're going to lose a lot, but the ones we win are going to make up for the ones we lose. And we aren't anywhere near that right now, folks. Uh, the fact that we still have a B grade to fade the White Sox is like, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Let's just rock and roll here. Uh, no hesitation for me at all. If I can get a B grade fading this White Sox team, I think 
It might be a week from now, might be two weeks from now, but I think we're going to start seeing some insane prices against the White Sox coming up. And that's going to be where we just kind of pass and just look the other way because it won't be worth it because the White Sox will accidentally win a game or two there. But right now, anywhere, like anywhere near even money on this is ridiculous for the minus one. I know we push on the times the Royals one by one, which will happen on Friday, but I think it's worth the risk here. Um, I think the Royals, again, personal preference, you can take money line, you can take minus one, you take the run line, whatever you want to do. Uh, it, it's all personal preference. I just personally love this minus one because – they win by one like they did here on Friday. I can just say, eh, whatever, okay. Um, but, you know, you take the money line, you're playing some steep odds. You better be real careful uh, because those losses don't need very many losses to pile up. Run lines just can be incredibly frustrating, especially for the home team. So uh, I like the minus one. That's just my personal type. However you want to play it, it's Royals or Pass. We're going to be in the Royals minus one. B grade pick. Got a, an A grade winner here on a morning pick of the Brewers on Friday. And that's why you want to be over there with us on Dub Club. Uh, when the model updates, when the lines update, you see those morning editions, those A grades uh, that are nice to jump on. This was one of them, although it was very sweaty. The Brewers controlled the entire game. And then all of a sudden, the ninth inning went haywire, but they were able to get a uh, walk off walk for us, I believe, uh, to cash. We're going to go back to the well here. Brewers minus 110, A grade pick. The model is has been updated. So if you look at some of these grades here from yesterday, it's there's going to be a few that are different. Um, ran an update here on Friday to spend some time really just making sure all the all the T's were crossed and I's were dotted with all the roster stuff. Um, a lot of under the hood stuff where I am changing the mechanics of what I'm doing so that I can eventually output more player based stuff. Uh, one of those things, for instance, is injuries uh, before injuries happened before I sent the code to R. And that made it where any time someone got hurt or someone was needed to pull from the lineup or something, I'd like rerun the whole thing thing uh, for that for that day. And and that was really an annoying process. So now I have it where all the projections, everything happened in R first, and then it spits out enough data so that then I can adjust the lineups with injuries and stuff like that. So it, it just runs a lot cleaner now. And, and as part of that process, just a lot of the like cleaning things up, uh, it shifted things around a little bit here and there. Uh, one of those teams is the Brewers, who the model seems to like now because we all of a sudden had an A grade on them Friday. Now I've got an A grade on Saturday. Maybe it's that the model doesn't like the Mariners as much. I'm not really sure. Uh, but, you know, obviously this Brewers offense I don't trust and I don't love. And I would be very hard pressed to back the Brewers on any run line at this point or minus one even because I'm just not confident they can score that many runs. Uh, but they got good pitching and they hang around there at home. Uh, model gives them a 56% chance to win. Largely in the strength of their pitching, they are going to be out offensed in this game with regards to the offensive talent compared to Seattle, but they'll have an edge with DL Hall versus Bryce Miller. Hall is a young guy who pitched a little bit last year for Baltimore, came over in the Corbin Burns trade, and the underlying metrics were not good on him in his first start. And so that is a concern, but we still think that based off what we saw from him last year, that he's still average as opposed to Bryce Miller, who grades out below average. Uh, Miller was a guy who's had some promise coming up, uh, but has struggled at times. I believe the whole like back half of last year, it seemed like he kind of struggled, did not look good in his first start. And then all the metrics weren't kind to him either. So uh, two kind of young struggling pitchers in this one that I'm not really sure what to make of either one of them. Um, but the model trust Hall more and the model trust than the Brewers bullpen uh, a little bit more with regards to the depth guys, as you can see that first number there on screen, that 98 versus 103, that is comparing the overall how much depth, how good if you need to get into your middle relievers as well. And that's the number I think that matters more in this game. If this was, I don't even know who, uh, I guess, you know, we'll say Freddie Peralta or last year Corbin Burns on the Brewers versus Logan Gilbert, Luis Castillo, whatever. Um, I don't really matter at all. None of those guys are going to pitch. It's really just about the top arms. And that's where the, the Mariners have stronger top arms than the Brewers, mainly because with the Brewers, uh, you know, losing their, their their best reliever for for half the season or so, or, or a third of the season or whatever is not ideal for them. Um, but that first number of the Brewers are a little bit better overall matters because I don't trust either one of these starting pitchers. So the model says trust Hall more than Miller. Then the model says if both these pitchers struggle, trust the Brewers bullpen more the Brewers are at home. Model gives them a 56% chance to win. That makes minus 110 a pretty good investment. I think 56 is a little high personally. I don't think it quite should be that high. 
But that's why we like the A grades. It's not quite this simple, but we can try to think of it in the sense of, this is the way Cousin Jared explains it, that even when the model's off a little bit, we still have a solid play. The A grades are, if the model's off by a decent bit, it's still plus expected value. Doesn't mean it's going to win. It just means it's plus expected value. B grades are, the model can be off a little and it's still plus expected value, but if the model's off by a decent bit, maybe it's not. Maybe it's actually not a good number. Whereas the A grades are like, even if the model's off a decent bit, it's still a good number. And that's exactly how I think this one is. I think 56% person might be a little bit high. I think she might be 54, 55, you know, a little bit lower. Uh, but what does that mean? It means minus 110 is still a good number. Uh, and that's why we like the A grade play. So Brewers A grade play there at home. Diamondbacks and Braves. Uh, Braves with a nice little comeback win to get us to push on the minus one. I think you saw all the reasons why I talked about the minus one liking it in the last show, not liking the run line with the home team. The books and sideline both price the minus one and a half and plus one and a half, minus one and a half for the road team versus minus one and a half when they're the home team differently because of that. It's accounted for. Okay. So rest assured, if you're seeing all the probabilities that you get from sideline, all the run line, reverse run line, all that stuff, that's all accounted for. Uh, the books account for it too. Uh, but as I mentioned, the Braves run line price just wasn't great. They could easily win by a run. Kind of would have expected if it were maybe 4-3 rather than whatever it finished up, 5-4 or 6-5 or whatever it was. Uh, I think 6-5 was way more runs than I expected, um, given the pitchers. But, you know, that's <laughs> why... I made the comment that laying minus odds in the run line when the Braves are the home team is just a tougher value proposition. But for whatever reason, there were enough people who were scared off on the big price in the money line that the money line still held value for us because there were a lot of ways the Braves could run away and win and either bet wins. And there were a lot of ways the Braves could win close. And we happen to be in one of those realities. So again, if you took the money line and played it safer, congrats. If I'm almost certain I made this suggestion, if I didn't, I'm not going to be kicking myself here, but I'm pretty sure I mentioned, you know, if you wanted to do like a two-team money line parlay, Braves and Phillies, that'd be about even money. That obviously hit for you, which would have been a nice little, I think slightly plus odds winner based off where the prices were. Um, all that to say today, we're not going to touch the side. We're going to go under nine and a half. A great play. I love when we can go under nine and a half. The weather is still going to be fairly cold, low 50s, the slight breeze out, uh, but cold enough temperatures where that ball should not fly. That doesn't mean we can't see a bunch of runs because obviously both of these teams can put up runs in a hurry. But I'm going to trust that Max Freed is going to, A, have a bounce back start, make it out of the first inning. <laughs> B, uh, do what Spencer Schreider couldn't do, which was, uh, you know, maybe have a scoreless first inning. A couple, a couple of notes here first off, because I was I, I watched that game uh, and, and, the, and the broadcast team that I listened to, I believe it was the Braves broadcast, mentioned this. Um, the Diamondbacks last year were like one of the lowest teams in first pitch swing percentage. Strider gets up there and is like, hey, I'm just going to throw fastballs over the plate, get strikes, and they just attacked. Uh, kudos to them for that. Um, Freed has looked at that now. He's seen that, and he's not going to make that same mistake. So I think... And then once you saw after that, they really struggled to score off Spencer Schreiber because he's one of these the best pitcher in baseball. Um, so I think that the I think that Max Fried will have a better game plan. Number two, he didn't make it out of the first inning last week because maybe the worst non-strike call I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it was literally a fastball right down the middle that the catcher just caught. Like it wasn't one of those where the catcher like jumped up and then caught it low or like misread the pitch or like there wasn't a stolen base. It was just like a literal fastball down the middle strike, like literally down the middle. I, I've never seen this before at the major league level and called the ball. It made no sense. Um, that would be strike three out three and he's out of the inning as it was that turned into a walk. And then his pitch count got up. I think there was like an infield dribble or hit or whatever. And then it just kind of spiraled out of control. Uh, and first start of the year, you, you or did any start, really, you just have to worry about how many pitches your starting pitcher has, especially a, a guy like Freeze had some injury problems and you were counting on him to be a workhorse for you this year and you're counting on him in October. Um, that was fluky. And as we mentioned, anything can happen in baseball, anything can happen in sports. Humans are weird. Sports are weird. One game variance. So that's what I always say. Don't, you know, keep your bankroll, you know, you know keep your bets to, you know, two or 3% of your bankroll for what you like. Don't ever go more than 5% of your bankroll on any one pick because anything can happen and you're going to be on a roller coaster if you're, if you're betting more because sports are weird. Um, that said, I like the under here. 
I like Freed to do better. I like him to keep the Dunbacks bats at bay. Brandon fought. I like what I've seen from him. I think he might be a little bit better than the model realizes. He outperformed the model a lot at the end of last year, and his grade hasn't increased that much. He's one that really surprised me that the model isn't a little bit higher on. I think it's going to take a few more good starts for him to maybe get the respect he deserves. I could be wrong, and the Braves could light him up because the Braves offense is good, and they can go for crooked numbers at any time. But we saw this kid last year. I was pretty high on Like I was impressed with him. The model didn't love him. Model here now gives him a 98 grade, but I kind of think he's more like in the low 90s. I think he's better than that with the potential upside to get in the 80s here pretty soon. Um, underlying metrics in the first start were great. Um, and again, we saw him pitch you know, some some big moments in, in October against some really good offenses there too. And and uh, just continue to impress. So I, I, I like backing fought in, in any way. And I like backing free to bounce back spot for him. Uh, I love that we get under nine and a half. And the last thing I want to say about this game, we've seen it in years past in Atlanta in the summer when it gets hot and the wind's blowing out, the ball flies out of this ballpark. But when it's not hot, it doesn't really fly. That doesn't mean there can't be runs. But I think you saw it last night. If you watched here Friday night's game, Olsen's uh, double, I guess got to 5-4, the walk-off in the 10th, those are home runs if it's not cold. If it's 80 degrees in the summer on like a normal night, because it's still like 80 degrees when the sun goes down in places like Atlanta and, and Texas and whatnot, right? On, on the, in the, in the sun belt there. Those are home runs. Uh, but the pulse doesn't carry that well there when it's cold. And so obviously it turned out where both were doubles anyway. So that still hits, right? But my point is like those guys crush those balls and then get out. That's why we like the under, not because that doesn't mean there can't be hits, but like this weather is going to make it where it's harder to home runs. We're more likely to see home runs turn to doubles, doubles turn to outs. Um, and that can knock off a run or two that we would have otherwise expected. That's why we have that negative 10% adjustment for the weather. And again, I like backing both these pitchers here. So under nine and a half, A grade play there. Rays and Rockies. Folks, this is not for the faint of heart. We're going to go under 12 and a half, an A grade pick. And folks, the only reason we are giving an A grade play to a game at Coors Field. First off, the Rockies offense is terrible. Second off, the relievers are actually looking pretty decent. Look at that reliever grade, 107. Like, man. Third, the conditions Friday were about as good as you could ask for. You maybe could have asked for a summer day where there was an extra 10 degrees. But, I mean, it was like a low 70s, sunny, like 15 to 20 mile an hour wind blowing straight out. And that game was like... Four to two going to the middle in the middle of the eighth. And there were a bunch of runs late, but I mean, that was about as good a hitting conditions as you could ask for. And it's a miracle that game got over. If you had the over, I mean, you're just like, go buy a lot of ticket because that was some crazy luck there. Um, even at the end, of course, the Rays, you know. Uh, it took the lead <laughs> seven to six, but they could have easily lost six to five and, and still gone under despite all the late runs. Folks, the weather Saturday is going to be the exact opposite. Nighttime start here. Uh, well, I say nighttime start, uh, eight, 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 10 Eastern. Uh, I guess the sun will still be up, but I mean, 40 degrees. Closing this game, the temperature will be in the upper 30s. The wind is going to be 25 to 30 miles an hour blowing mostly in from left field. It might shift a little bit across. What that's going to do is all of the right-handed hitters, it's going to, anything that's like a foul home run, is going to push it back into like play. You're not going to be able to, because if you if you hit a foul based off the way the wind's going to go, you're going to be going straight into the wind. And it's going to, almost assuredly, it's either going to stay foul or it's going to like hang up and be like a high pop fly out to left field, maybe in foul territory. Anything that you crush to like the power alley is going to become like a routine fly ball to the center fielder. 
you got a lefty who crushes one to right field. It's going to blow foul. <laughs> like it, it, balls are going to going to be blown down, dead into play when they hang up and out of play when they're crushed or in or hang up if they're crushed. Like it's just going to be massive pitching weather. Now, there's no locks in gambling. Course Field's a large ballpark. There's a lot of green. If the guys just put the ball in play and just, you know, just poking singles, there could be a lot of runs in this game. Absolutely. Here's the thing. This Rays offense, not great. Very average. Uh, weaker against righties. And I think you saw it here on, on Friday. You know, even in really favorable conditions, like those Rockies relievers, like, kind of held their own against them. They held their own against them. I'll say kind of. They did. Other than the one guy. These Rockies bats are terrible. They are terrible on the road. And they look great at home when they have great hitting conditions, which is most games. But this game is not one of them. There's random like two to one games at Coors. And it's in these type of conditions because they don't have a good offense, right? That's what this is setting up for. These starting pitchers aren't great. But the conditions are there for the under the Rays relievers are their best thing. Um, the second and third days that you play at altitude tend to go better because you've been there, you've pitched there, that sort of thing. So I expect all those guys who pitched here on Friday to when they pitch again Saturday or Sunday to do better for the Rays. These Rockies relievers are decent enough and might, probably their best thing as well. 12 and a half is too high uh, for this one. The model projects 8.8 .8 because of this weather. Now, if the wind shifts to be truly across, it'll still be cold and that'll kind of cancel out with the carrying factor and the ball will carry like normal. Uh, it won't carry like it normally does in course because it's still cold. So the weather adjustment would probably only be like a minus 17, 18 or whatever. And we project more like 9.5, 10. Either way, that makes this under a great pick. So under 12 and a half, a great play. No locks in gambling. Anything can happen. The ball can just find holes, that sort of thing. And we could have a repeat of the eighth and ninth innings again. But this weather is the exact opposite of Fridays. I don't want to take advantage of that. So under a, a great play there. 9 p.m., Padres and the Giants. Got a double winner on this one. Got the Giants as a morning A grade a money line winner again, folks. Sign up on Dub Club, you get a bunch of extra goodies. I try to make it worth your while. Uh, if you're with us over there already, you already know that. Uh, and as always, I'm open to suggestions of how I can make it more worth your while because uh, you're supporting me, and I appreciate that. I want to I want to help you out as well. I want to help you come better, 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 smarter, better. Give you more information, right? So we got the Giants. There's an A grade, and I gave it on Twitter. The extra credit pick, the first five under, got that as well. So a double winner there. And San Francisco was nice for us on Friday. Had some things, just like every day, we had some things go great for us. We had some things not go great for us. It's the way it goes. Uh, but we're going to be back on the Giants again. Minus 105 A grade. I mentioned in yesterday's show, the model was telling us to go to the Giants, but I wanted it to be the right price if I'm going to fade Dylan Cease. And sure enough, in the morning, we got to the right price for that to happen. Here, less of a concern because I have no qualms about fading Michael King. Not that he's a bad pitcher. He's just very average. Both these pitchers are, and you look on screen there, and this is just an average type game. Padres offense, good. Giants offense, good. Both these pitchers, solid. The bullpens are the difference. And this Giants bullpen, I've been down on them. And, and I want to make sure I frame this correctly for you. I've been down on them. You've heard me kind of disparage them and be concerned about them. I'm concerned about them because the bullpen was such a strength last year. It's not that they're terrible. It's that last year, the guys they had, they had depth. They had obviously like Doval as a top guy. Um, they could go to a bullpen game. They had just arms after arms for arms. And of course, they you know they had guys like you know Alex Wood and, and Ross Stripling, these guys who are now starters, and they could throw them in, in the mix. And, and Manaya like came out of nowhere and was like actually competent. Again, uh, that was that was weird, right? So they 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 just had all these arms. And this year, their bullpen is not great. It's still better than the Padres, right? And so that's the difference in this game. I trust the Giants' bullpen more than the Padres' bullpen and the Apes in San Francisco. So the model's got them in a 56% chance to win. Minus 105 is insanely cheap for this game. I don't understand it. When you look at the underlying metrics, again, it's just one game. You've heard me say that a lot, right? Just one game. But the underlying metrics for King in his first start were terrible. The underlying metrics for Keaton Wynn were really good. Both those guys gave up runs, but when you look underneath the hood, the underlying metrics become predictive after a handful of starts. So we're not there yet, but like 
the early indicators are like, maybe I'm a little bit more okay with a win than King. It could just be one game, et cetera. But the model taking all that into account, all the stuff last year, everything it can in this year together is like, this is a coin toss with these pitchers. It's a coin toss with these offenses. But wait, the Giants are at home and have a better bullpen. Why are they minus 105? That's why it gets an A grade. Love the Giants here all day long. Get no logs and gambling. You never really know. But the idea is at a price near even money, this is not a 50-50 coin toss game. The Giants should be favored. So treating as a coin toss means we've got value. And then to wrap us up here, Red Sox at the Angels. I don't know exactly what it was in the update that happened where again, we're getting all of our T's crossed and our I's dotted. Uh, the angels bullpen got a little bit worse. Um, the Red Sox got a little better. I don't really know, but all of a sudden we had a a great play of the Red Sox, uh, in the morning over on dub club and we got an a great play on them right now. So, uh, as I'm recording this right now, we are, you know, Red Sox are ahead four to one. So we'll see if that holds. We'll see if we have a closing out the night on a winner with the Red Sox. Um, but now the model likes the Red Sox more the Angels list. I'm not really sure uh, which one it is, but it was just enough of a difference to, to throw that out there. And I was a little bit, you know, skeptical of it on Friday. As I was looking at it, I was like, you know what? Yeah, like Cutter Crawford, sure. Like I can, I can get behind that. But this one I, I think makes a lot of sense. Like Garrett Whitlock is like kind of really good. Um, Reed Detmers is not bad i don't think he's as good as that last start but like garrett whitlock is like low key might be one of the best pitchers in baseball his grade is only a 77 when you look under the hood of how he gets the grade because the model doesn't really think he can go that deep uh we haven't really seen it from him maybe that's not really on him maybe that's on the fact that the every time you turn around with the red sox it seemed like he was like their closer and he's a starter he's their closer he's a starter and it probably wasn't that bad, but that's how it felt like for me, for not, not being a Red Sox fan, just seeing it from the outside. Um, so maybe he can. Five innings in his first start, 0.66 FIP. I mean, it, it, and we saw under the hood last year too, like low-key, like Garrett Whitlock, like might be one of the best pitchers in baseball. Like might be like a top five pitcher. Um, might be. I'm not saying he's, but I'm just like, it's on the table. Like this guy's really good. And so uh, back in the, the Red Sox at minus 105, when I can back Garrett Whitlock, it's hard not to do. Now, the Angels do have the better offense, of course, but the bullpen discrepancy is large. I think it's more likely to matter that bullpen discrepancy on Saturday night because I don't really trust either one of these guys to go deep to models and think Whitlock can go deep. I've seen Reed Detmers pitch a lot. For whatever reason, I tend to watch a lot of Angels games, probably because there's less West Coast games. I've seen him pitch a lot and he can get up into some high pitch counts. And so, I mean, obviously he can go like seven innings tomorrow and that's just the way the, the world works sometimes, but like he can work himself out of a game by like the fourth or fifth inning. And then at that point, you got to get four or five more innings from that angel bullpen. Like, good luck. You know, like it might work, but I just don't have a lot of faith in him. This angel seems not terrible. Uh, I I've mentioned that before and, and they've started the season here off uh, four and two with, with this one pending. Um, I'll just play the Marlins, I guess, but uh, you know, they're not terrible. Um, but you know, when you go up against a guy like Garrett Whitlock, you don't expect to win. It would be a a lucky win, a happy win, a surprise win, I guess I would say. And that's what the model says, 58% for the Red Sox. Again, no locks in gambling. It's not saying the Red Sox will win. It's just saying, hey, the Red Sox are going to win this about six out of ten times. And so we might have one of those four, but we would be a little bit surprised. And that's kind of why the Red Sox are in a great play because it's like minus 105 – we would expect that to win about six out of 10 times and it might lose. But if we make this bet 10 times, we win six of them. We're going to be doing really well. So Red Sox, a grade to wrap up your night, folks. I went really long on this one. I was, you know, this is our first show. We've crossed the hour mark, but it's about time we've done that. You know, when we cover every single game, you know, it, it's bound to happen. But uh, again, if you're not with us on Dub Club, if you're still watching, you know, thanks for watching the whole thing. Uh, hit that like button if you haven't yet. We really appreciate that. It really helps us out. Discord chat group, more picks when the starting pitchers change, when we don't have lines, when the updated lines, weather changes, all sorts of summary information, all sorts of benefits, picks. When you can't watch the show, picks when we don't have a show, no shows on Sunday uh, for those games. So the picks will be available on Dub Club. Start out with your 10 day free trial if you haven't yet if you start off now you get the picks in your 10-day trial for this sunday and next sunday hopefully you like it. you can stick around hopefully i'm making you some money and you can support me and i can support you we appreciate it if you're with us as always best of luck this weekend with your final four betting all that's over on dub club as well 
uh, with your NBA, with your hockey, of course, with your baseball. And as always, remember, you can eat your betting money, but you should not be betting your eating money.